climate alarmist destroyed by leftists. Mr. Reagan. Our confidence levels, feelings of self-worth, our daily frame of mind, they're directly tied to our appearance. Now, many anti-aging serums attempt to capitalize on this phenomenon. However, many of these products fall short because they don't target the root of the problem. Many serums typically attempt to cover up wrinkles, which is only temporary. An alternative that I've found is collagen. This is a much better solution because it goes beneath the surface to promote skin elasticity and overall appearance. And the collagen that I use is called Ageless Multi-Collagen here from Biotrust. And I do use it. You can see that this, one, this bag is actually almost empty because I use this every day. Collagen is fantastic. Actually, in the script that they've given me here to talk about the product, they're mainly talking about skin health. But I'm going to switch it up a little bit because collagen has a multitude of benefits beyond just healthy skin. You need good protein on just about every healthy diet plan. And collagen is just about the best protein that you can get. Now, I'm currently back on keto, and I watch a lot of Thomas DeLauer videos and a bunch of other doctors and health nuts on YouTube, and they all recommend taking collagen collagen. Now, I actually have joint issues, so I take collagen especially for that, but also for the myriad of other health benefits that collagen provides. Okay, well, let me get back onto the script that they provided me here. Collagen is the number one protein in our skin, and it's needed to promote elasticity and a youthful-looking appearance. So if you've been looking for a way to reduce the appearance of wrinkles, you will love Ageless Multi-Collagen from Biotrust. You can get 51% off if you go to healthwithreagan.com or by clicking the link in the description below. All right, before I start the video, I've got a new comedy video on Mr. Pagan. It's pretty funny, guys. I highly suggest going to that channel and watching that after this video. Also, one of the viewers of this channel sent me a link yesterday about some signs in Arizona. So the Arizona, I guess, state government has started to post signs all over the, the highways that, that are encouraging people to get vaccinated. And she's posted a petition to try to get rid of these COVID messages on the Arizona freeway. So if you, you can only sign this petition if you're from Arizona. So if you live in Arizona, you're sick of seeing those signs telling you to get vaccinated. Uh, go ahead and click on that petition below. All right, let's get into this video. So in the UK, there's a show called Good Morning Britain. You guys may know it as the show that uh, Piers Morgan got fired off of. <laughs> but uh, anyway, it's a bunch of leftists, right? Everybody who's on that show is left wing, but they like to tackle difficult issues. And occasionally in the UK, you will still have some political debate, which is something that you very rarely see here in America because leftists are afraid to debate anything with conservatives. So anyway, but you in this case, this is kind of funny because you have a bunch of leftists talking to a an extreme radical climate alarmist who is also obviously left wing. And what's happened here is in the UK, there is a, a, is a particular group of people. It's so important to them to create some kind of an awareness of climate change that they are stopping traffic, right? They're standing in, in front of traffic. They're blocking the traffic on, on highways, major highways. And this is a tactic that we saw with Black Lives Matter here in the United States. It's jumped over the pond to the climate alarmists over there in the UK. Let me show you a short clip from this interview. Liam Norton from Insulate Britain says there's just no other option than to take this sort of action. I don't understand how this helps your cause. You haven't understood what I said last week about what we do in the next three to four years will determine the future of no, humanity. No, I understand it. I'm no, asking about no, those pictures. How is that helping your cause? If you understood it, you might start to understand that a little bit more. Mm. An insulate in Britain will give the best value for money in mm. terms of reducing emissions, hundreds of thousands of jobs, and it's going to stop tens of thousands of, of our elderly from dying each winter. Why haven't you insulated your own home for a start? Because I think where you're coming from is pure hypocrisy as well. Sorry, is that the case? Is your home not insulated, Liam? Susanna, whether my, whether my home is insulated or not doesn't change the fact that oh. millions of people's homes aren't insulated Hang on a and they're moment. not Sorry. going to be. Is this the case? You're saying you would risk your life for Insulate Britain, but you're not going to insulate your own home? Susanna, 
The thing is, sorry okay, if I sound patronising, but the all thing is, this question. is like a shame that this discussion has been ba like debased in this way because what we're talking about is the future of the, the uh, of our country. A woman suffered a stroke mm. sitting in a car mm -hmm. um, in solid traffic with her with her son at her side. She was in the car for six hours. She's now paralysed. How can you possibly justify? putting a woman in hospital who cannot speak and not move because she couldn't get to hospital in time because of what you were doing. It doesn't change the position that we're in in terms of the climate and the position you that we're left. You don't lose any sleep about that? Yeah. Well, why are you still doing it then? I'm trying to... F so, in terms of... You're not listening to what I'm saying in terms of the future of our country is at stake, so I've said that, but then the first thing... I am fascism, listening, and I agree with you. But the fascism... I actually agree with you that we should be insulated the fascism, I think you're right. But, okay. I think the government should be helping okay, people so on the like fascism, you to pay for insulation. Richard, but just, what, Richard, the way that you're Richard. pushing the argument is... Fatal. In 1937, do you know how many ministers, how many MPs supported Churchill? I don't care. In 1937, I'm not six. interested in Churchill. Really? Churchill was right, wasn't he? Mm. But he only had the support of six you're MPs. You're comparing yourself to Winston Churchill. No, I'm not always. The public are always with you, but you're still right. And we're right now. <laughs> this is about what's right and what is wrong. That is the most and we're talking about the future of debate. our country. This is our line in the sand. We are demanding that the government make a meaningful statement to save the future of this country. And if, and they, if they refuse to do it, then they, they can put us in prison. And I've people. had enough of talking to people in this country about Morgan. what we're doing. <laughs> you doing this peers. is <laughs> the state of things. Bye. Yeah, bye. <laughs> we now know that these protesters are actually following in the footsteps of Winston Churchill. That is the level of intellectual debate that they're able to bring to the table. Now, this, this really made me laugh because this guy storms off the set of Good Morning Britain because he can't really answer the questions that are being asked of him. He can't respond to the criticisms that are being set against him. He, his organization is trying to create awareness of climate change. Think about that for a second. How many of you have never heard about climate change? I'm thinking somewhere around 0%, 0% of you. I mean, everybody in the developed world has heard about climate change. So this guy is kind of an indefensible guy, right? He's bringing awareness to people about an issue in which there is total saturation in, in the media ab about this subject, right? Everybody is constantly hearing about climate change. We do not need any more awareness being brought to this issue. So it seems to me that this guy is really just essentially trying to get attention for himself, He's just a greedy person. He's a te an attention-seeking person. He wants to create some kind of a career. He wants to become some kind of a martyr or some kind of a celebrity climate change activist, right? Because being a climate change activist can create celebrity at this point, right? I mean, look at Greta Thunberg, right? I have this picture of her right here for when I do my Mr. Pagan show. I put it over the Mr. Reagan picture. I know that seems blasphemous, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it's part of the joke. But yeah, Greta, Greta Thunberg is a huge celebrity now on the left because she is a prominent climate activist. And I think this guy's trying to shoot for the same thing. So there really isn't anything that he's doing of any benefit. Even if you believe that climate change is an existential threat and it's going to destroy the planet and all these stupid things, even if you believe all of that stuff, there's nothing that he's doing that provides any kind of benefit to that movement. The biggest impact that he's having is stopping people getting to work on time. That's basically it, right? The most severe consequence of what happened, you know, when he was blocking the traffic there was that there was a woman who'd had a stroke and she was being rushed to the hospital and she was stuck in traffic for six hours. Now, we don't really know what the consequences would have been had she got to the hospital in time or, you know, or earlier. But what is almost certainly true is that her case is probably far more severe because she was having to sit in the tra that traffic. And who who knows how many people's lives were disrupted in what ways because of these people. And it could have been far worse. I mean, people could have died waiting to go to the hospital stuck in that traffic. And to me, this is like a perfect analogy for how the left acts and reacts with just about every issue. I was actually thinking about this the other day because I believe President McKinley who was a Republican, was assassinated in office. President Lincoln was assassinated in office. Obviously, Kennedy was a Democrat assassinated in office, but he was assassinated by a communist, right? So it seems like the, the left and the far left and the, the radical left, they don't seem to understand the concept of a balanced response to something, right? So they see something that is that it concerns them or they think they get in, need to get involved with or they got to be an activist about, 
And instead of saying, okay, let's try to get legislation passed, instead of that, they say, let's murder people. Let's bomb a building. Let's stop highway traffic. There are all of these extreme responses that they have to everything because they think that that is the best way forward. And to me, there was a a survey fairly recently that was uh, published that showed that the craziest people in terms of political affiliation, the craziest people were Democrats and the most sane people were Republicans. And that definitely plays out uh, when you see how Democrats act and react with regard to any kind of political issue. They are extreme. In fact, I was involved with a business a little while back called Unwoke. You guys might remember this. I was trying to promote it on the show. Now, the idea of this business was that there's all these HR firms online that you could hire somebody who was, you know, great for the job or whatever. But the problem with that is that a lot of people coming out of college have this kind of woke ideology and they and they want to implement this woke ideology in every company that they work for. There are all these uh, woke ideas that most companies probably don't want infesting their company. And so we thought, well, well, we'll make an HR site where you can hire people and you can specifically, by joining the site, you're basically saying, we don't subscribe to this woke ideology. We had a great response with regard to people trying to get jobs through the site. There were tons and tons of thousands and thousands of people trying to get jobs to the site. We had a much harder time trying to attract businesses to the site. And the reason we had trouble bringing businesses in is because businesses are terrified that if they are labeled as conservative or not woke or whatever, that there's going to be this massive backlash against them. There's going to be uh, an enormous uh, social consequence and they're going to lose business and it's going to potentially bankrupt them. Businesses are terrified of this and it's basically because the left uses the tactics of terrorism to try to control the culture, to try to control politics. This is just the way that things go now. And I do feel like I was I was talking to somebody about this the other day. I do feel like we've we've actually hit an end point with leftism in terms of how willing society is to allow the left to go far to to the leftist extreme. I think that we finally hit the end point and we're rubber banding sort of back toward the middle. I think that the that society believes that the further right you go, the more you get toward totalitarianism, you get toward white supremacy, stuff like that. I don't actually believe that. I don't think when you go further right, you end up with uh, white supremacy. On the left, you know, the left is all about big government and controlling everything and regulating everything. The right is all about giving people freedom. So the further right you go, you are eventually going to hit anarchy. And you don't want that, obviously. But there is this illusion that society has that the further right you go, the more you get to like uh, totalitarianism, right? But I don't think that's actually true. I think that's really where the leftist ideology leads, right? If I want smaller government, if I say, you know, get out of my pocket, let me choose the best life for myself. If I'm saying that, and, and that's the conservative worldview, then, like I said, it, it it eventually feeds into anarchy if you go too far that way. If you go to the left, what you end up with is more and more control, more and more domination, and then you get this authoritarianism, right? The whole communist view is about controlling society, and who controls it? Eventually, it, it will be a dictator, a totalitarian dictator. However, the illusion has always been dictator is right wing and left wing is freedom and utopia. That's what a lot of Americans have always thought. But now we're reaching a point in which we can actually see the consequences of going too far left, right? And one of the problems is trans men, men who dress up as women. There's this idea that trans women are women and they should be granted the same rights as every other woman. And so you have the possibility of, let's say, the government decides they're going to give some subsidies to female-owned businesses because they want to promote female-owned businesses. And they look at 20 businesses and they say, we're going to we're going to issue these subsidies on merit, which sounds pretty funny when they're actually issuing them based on gender, but they're ba- basing them on merit within that framework of gender. And they say, we'll look at 100 businesses and the top 10 will get these grants, will get these subsidies. And they look at them and they say, okay, these are all run by businesses, but these are the top 10. Well, what if those top 10 businesses are all run by trans women? Well, then you've got these subsidies that are set aside, these grants that are set aside for for women-run businesses, but they're all going to men who just dress up as women. And so none of the women get the... Uh, get these grants. Now, I don't believe in the government, that the government should be interfering with the private sector in this way anyway, but they tend to. But on the other hand, you have 
sports that are divided, and this is obviously the biggest issue, the issue that everybody talks about. You have sports that are divided by gender. You have the men's sports and you have the women's sports. And feminists have always said that for for every men's sport that you have, you have to have an equal number of of women playing sports. I don't really understand that because women don't like sports as men typically. Whatever, that that's still, <laughs> for whatever reason, feminists think that women need to play sports as much as guys. Fine, whatever. But I do think women should have the opportunity to play sports if they want to play sports. But the, the problem that you end up with with the whole trans situation is that if you have... So, you know, you have a team of, of guys, they're the best guys in school, and they play that on that sports team, and then you have a team of girls, and, uh, you know, they're, they're the best girl players of that sport, but then you get a bunch of guys who maybe they don't, they'll make it onto the guys team, but they're still better than the best girls in the school, so they all just say they're women, and then they get all, on, they all get on the women's team. Well, then you've got just two guys teams. <laughs> you don't have a men's team and a women's team, you just have two guys teams. And so here you have a conflict. You have feminists that want to support women, and then you have trans rights activists who want to support men that dress up as women. And the men that dress up as women are taking the spots of real women in a variety of ways. And the feminists are saying, no, we we fought specifically for 100 years or whatever so that women would have a lot of the opportunities that men have that women didn't have. And now all these opportunities are being uh, stolen again by men who just wear lipstick. And this is terrible, right? So now we've reached a point in which you know, if you go any further, you hurt one group or the other, right? And so the left is now in conflict with itself. You also have this situation with COVID, where because of all the COVID restrictions, you know, you you, you see these uh, Republican states saying, we want to open the restaurants. We want to let people walk around without a mask on. Uh, we want to give people the choice of whether or not they are going to be vaccinated. And then you have all these leftists in both the federal government and at the state level um, and sometimes I think even in uh, on a local level, saying, well, no, you have to wear masks and you, you know, basically we have to shut down certain businesses and n- no, you can't be unvaccinated. If you're unvaccinated, there's all these consequences. And so the left is starting to see the authoritarian nature of the left. And I think that when that happens, there's only so far that some Democrats will go, some you know, left-wing minded people, there's only so far they're willing to go until they realize, okay, that has to end. Now, there are some Democrats who will just go all the way. It doesn't really matter how authoritarian Joe Biden is. It doesn't matter how corrupt he is. It doesn't matter how corrupt Nancy Pelosi is. They could all be criminals. It doesn't matter to them because they are, you know, there's some people that just never want to admit that they're wrong ever. So they're just going to fight to the death for the Democrats to win every election. They're always right, no matter what. They just blind themselves to it and they just go for it. Like this guy who's blocking traffic. He doesn't realize that the consequences of his actions are far more severe than any kind of benefit that he has on the world. And in fact, he doesn't realize he's not making any kind of a benefit. The only benefit that that exists is bringing attention to himself personally. And that's another big problem with the Democrats is a lot of their policies, a lot of the positions that they have, have been inspired by or motivated by individual benefit. If an individual thinks, oh, this is going to benefit me, I'm going to vote for it, or I'm going to put forth legislation that will benefit me personally. It's a me, me, me political party, the Democrats. The conservative party, the Republican party, is the party of principles. We say, okay, you know, this is the best way to structure a government, to allow businesses to freely make money, to allow people to prosper, to allow somebody to start a business, you know, deregulate, reduce the amount of government interference. That is a principled approach to governance as opposed to a selfish, principle-free approach to governance, which is what I see on the left. But anyway, I'm kind of getting into a lot of different uh, uh, aspects of the reason that I think the left is crazy. But I do think that this guy and his selfish behavior is actually endemic of the whole Democrat Party in America, the whole left worldwide. I don't know about every single part of the, the world. I mean, I'm sure there's like some places in which being a leftist is probably kind of a good thing. But throughout much of the developed world, if you are a leftist, you know, these are the kind of problems. And like I said, I think that there is only so far that citizens are willing to go. Most citizens are only willing to go so far. And I think that we've actually reached that threshold. I think we've gone so far left 
that we've reached the point where people can actually see the problems with going even further left, go, going more extreme left. I think they can see the totalitarian uh, writing on the wall, and I think that they can see the problems, the conflicts within their own party if they keep pushing for rights for th- this group or that group. And so, yeah, I do think that we've reached an end point. We've reached a point which is as far as the left can go, and now we have to come back a little bit. And so I actually think there's a lot of people that are becoming politically conservative. And a lot of us have recognized that, you know, in 2020, it seemed like it was it was likely that Trump was going to do well because we knew so many people who had left the Democrat Party, uh, the Democrat plantation, as many of us call it, uh, and had shifted to vote Republican. Uh, maybe they weren't, you know, a determined Republican. Some of them definitely were, but they were definitely not going to vote for somebody like Joe Biden. They weren't going to vote for Democrats. Uh, and I think that we see this here on this show, Good Morning Britain, These hosts have told this guy, you're going too far. You're a detriment to society. And so I think that this, the reason I wanted to do a show about this video is not just because it was really fun to watch this guy get destroyed by leftists. I think that's amazing. But I actually think that this is an important moment because it really does provide a metaphor for how the whole first world is turning. I think every developed nation is starting to see the downside of the extreme left, and they're starting to shift right. Uh, And I do think that there's a new dawn coming in which I do believe that conservatism is going to be a far more popular political philosophy than was true in the 1990s, than the early 2000s, even, even through the Trump era. I think that people are going to recognize that conservative values are really the way forward. I I think we had a great push during uh, Trump's time in office. But now that Biden's in office, I think that this is an even more powerful time to push people to the right, because you can start to see the the shortcomings of radical leftism. You know, so many people think right wing or conservative ideas are evil. It's just a, a mental block. It's just a problem that people have psychologically that they can't see that conservatism and being right wing doesn't mean totalitarianism, it doesn't mean racism, it doesn't mean all these nasty things. It just means smaller government, it just means living by traditional values and ethics that are actually beneficial to really to everyone. And also before I sign off, I do want to remind you guys to watch my Mr. Pagan channel. I do uh, believe that uh, this is a great uh, Mr. Pagan video and I think you guys are gonna like it. Uh, Support me there if you can. And also, um, if you're from Arizona, go into the description below and you're gonna see a link for this, uh, for this thing, that's that this petition that uh, one of my fans wants wants you guys to sign. All right, well that's it for me. And remember, it's not that the liberal friends are ignorant; it's just they know so much that isn't so. Good night, guys. Those who would trade our freedom for the soup kitchen of the welfare state have told us they have a utopian solution of peace without victory. They call their policy accommodation. They say we offer simple answers to complex problems, but well, perhaps there is a simple answer: that we want our national policy based on what we know in our hearts is morally right. 